Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my February wrap-up. I did not mention in my last video, but this month was February hosted by Lauren of Lauren in the Books and also Black History Month here in the U.S. So I read two books that were, no, I read three books that were by male authors. Two of those books were written by black male authors, which is why I read them. One of them was just, I was reading it for review, so I read it. Um, and then the rest of them were all written by women authors, and majority of them were black women authors. So I really focused this month on reading as many black female authors as I could. I spent a lot of time focusing on that. Um, and as a result, I actually got quite a bit of it done. I think I finished almost all the books that I own that are written by black female authors, um, which means I just get to rebuy and find new books. And I'm really excited because I like finding black female authors because I, I just I really like a lot of the books that they write. So I'm super excited to keep the diversity going. But in this situation, I tried to focus on that and it kind of... I did as well as I could. It wasn't perfect, it wasn't ideal, and I tried my best, but I did okay. Um, so this part of the wrap up, the two two women um, in this in this part are white females, um, but the rest of them are all written by black female authors. So yay, let's dive in. So. First we have Where the Line Bleeds by Jasmine Ward. This is about Joshua and Christoph. Christoph, they are twins and they're raised by their blind grandmother and then one day their parents come back into the picture and they are unsure what to do. They're either gonna, you know, crash and burn like their parents did or they're gonna survive and continue on. Um, this talks about drug addiction and it addresses that. It talks about the experience of, um, kind of trying to find your place in the world and kind of trying to decide whether or not to follow in your parents' footsteps. It was really well done, really well executed. I really enjoyed it. I definitely think this is a strong novel, but I don't think it's Jasmine Ward's strongest novel. I think that I've definitely read better from her. I can say that having read two other books from her this month, one nonfiction and one fiction, um, I definitely enjoy her writing and I think this is a great book. I just wasn't thrilled with it and I didn't adore it. I definitely will reread it. I loved it that much. I will keep it on my shelves and I appreciate it but definitely one that I um, would recommend to people. Then we have Ruby by Cynthia Bond. This is the story of it's 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 from the perspective of a man who is in love with a woman named Ruby, who he's loved her for forever. And she has come back to this small town in Texas, I believe. Yes, in Texas, um, after having lived abroad in New York City for a while. And she is now old and decrepit and people are believing that she's crazy and judging her. And she's not old old she's just older and people kind of are pinpointing her as almost like that elusive other that creepy person who lives off on their own and and the, and the book opens with her wedding herself in front of a bunch of people it's really really dark it's really really sad but it's really beautiful I really adored this the writing style really floored me I think that it's a fantastic book um I definitely will reread it in the future and I think that for me it's just it's dazzling and it's it's just wonderful and I I find it a really good read and I definitely definitely recommend it. Then we have Lilith's Brood by Octavia Butler. This one, aliens. I mean, aliens, right? So it's a little rapey. Um, so trigger warnings. I definitely enjoyed this book. I thought it was really well done. I liked it less than I liked her other two books that I read that I'm going to review at the end. I definitely 
think that I missed some aspects of it because I was so uncomfortable. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And I think that it, it was really good. It definitely addressed consent, which was hard to talk about in a kind of inner species kind of way. Um, I definitely liked it though, and I would recommend it. So if you're curious about this, definitely pick it up. I, I liked it quite a bit. Then we have Speak by Laura Hall Sanderson, illustrated by Emily Carroll. Um, Speak is a book that came out, I think in the 90s. Um, I loved it. It came out right, or I found it, I should say, um, the summer after I'd been raped. And it's the story of a girl who was raped and is not believed that she was raped and she loses all of her friends and she loses, you know, faith in humanity and she's really sad and scared all the time and it was really dark and I loved that book. Still love that book. I think it's fantastic. Um, so this is the same story but in graphic novel form. Trigger warnings, definitely, but I would say that it's really well done. I was not in love with the art style. I liked it okay, but I wish there'd been color. Um, I That's my only critique, is I, I wish there'd been color. I wish it had been more of like that glossy, full color page kind of thing, but I don't think Emily Carroll usually uses color, so it's fine. Then, oh boy, um, An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. This book made me physically vomit. Okay, so trigger warnings for torture and yeah. Um, this is about a woman who is kidnapped and held hostage and her experience over those few days and then her trying to come to terms with it after the fact. I loved it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I definitely recommend it, but get ready for some really uncomfortable situations. Like, really uncomfortable. Um, Roxanne doesn't shy away from anything and it just, oh, gut punch, like serious gut punch. It is so intense. Oh my God, it's intense. Yeah, just, oh my God. Hang the Man by Shirley Jackson. This is about Natalie and she starts to lose her mind. And she starts to believe that there is a person speaking to her. And this person is telling her things uh, like what to do and what to say. And there is lesbian undertones. And it's fabulous. This book is fabulous. I adored it. I think it is one of Shirley's best. Um, I think this one comes in second after The Bird's Nest. I adored it. I think it's fantastic. Definitely talks about mental health. Definitely dives into madness and the experience of those who are going mad as they, as they spiral out of control. I adored it. Really liked it. This is Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. <sighs> I liked this better than Sing Unburied Sing. This is the story of Esh, Etch, Esh, um, and she discovers that she is pregnant. She is growing up in a male-filled environment with three brothers and her father. And there is a hurricane coming and they are trying to figure out how to survive this storm while she is trying to figure out what to do with her body. 
and this baby. It is startling. It is breathtaking. It is wonderful. It is jarring. It is epic. I loved it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I definitely would recommend this one. I think that for me, this is my favorite Jasmine Ward I've read so far. Um, I definitely really, really loved it. Like, um, and I think that if you are a Jasmine Ward fan and you haven't read this one, this is going to be a really good one to read. Um, I also would say that if you have read Jasmine Ward before and you haven't read this one, this is a good one to read. I would pick it up and I would own it as quickly as possible. So good. Freshwater. I did a full in-depth review of this. I will link it down below in the doobly-doo. This is by Akaweki, Akaweki Amazi, and this is brilliant. This is, you can look at it two different ways. You can look at it as a spiritual experience of a woman who has spirits within her, or you can read it as I did, which is an exploration of DID. I loved it as an exploration of DID. It was super accurate and it was definitely trigger warnings for suicide, self-harm, and rape. Um, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was exquisite. I definitely think it's great, but again, I've done a review so I will link that down below. Um, but yeah, I thought it was super super intense and definitely accurate in a depiction of DID. And then these two I read and I've done a full in-depth review of these two and I will link that down below in the doobly-doo. This is Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents. This is a dystopian book about a young girl named Lauren who is trying to survive a dystopian future that is very much like our own. Except it's gotten worse. It's so good. It's so good. I loved it. Loved it. If you haven't read this, please do. Again, review linked down below. So that is the wrap up for 2018's February reading wrap up. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or quandaries, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.